Calling to order. Ooh, we need a gavel. We have a bell. Yeah, but a gavel is more intense. I want to hit something. Both is a lot. <laughs> okay, well, the gavel is just for me then. The bell is for you. Welcome back, Mystery Seekers. My name is Jen, and one of my eyes won't stop watering. I am here with Taylor and Nate, and today I'm going to be telling you about the disappearance of Jesse Galganov. Mmm. Mm, I know. Water? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Tasty. I didn't, I didn't hear anything you said. But the tap. water, fantastic. <sighs> tap, you say? Yeah. Oh. Imported. Lovely. <laughs> On September 24th, 2017, Jesse, who was a 22-year-old Canadian student attending college in Connecticut, so he had a dual citizenship, embarked on a trip from Montreal to Lima, Peru. I am probably going to butcher some of these names, so buckle up. He was taking a gap year from school and was going to be backpacking through South America and Southeast East Asia for eight months, so a very long time. Because Jesse was such an experienced traveler and he had carefully planned out his entire trip, his family wasn't really worried. His family and friends um, were well aware of everywhere that he was going to be. Once he arrived in Lima, Jesse took a bus to Juarez where he was staying at a hostel and security footage shows Jesse arriving and leaving the bus station in Juarez and then heading in the direction of the Came or Kame House backpacker hostel where he was staying. On September 28th, Jesse texted his mom around 7 a.m. telling her that the next day he was going to begin his hike through the 31 mile Santa Cruz Trail through the Cor Cordillera, Cordillera Mountains where his phone would be out of service, but he was going to be in touch with her when he got back from the excursion on October 2nd. Up until he started his hike, he was in constant contact with his mom and his friends. He was like Snapchatting himself in the hostel. So he had like pictures and videos of himself actually in the hostel. People knew where he was. When did this take place again? 2017. Oh, wow. This is super, super recent. Okay, cool. When the hostel was questioned whether or not Jesse had been there, they said no. They had no knowledge of him ever being there. They later changed their statement and said that he was there, which is weird because, I mean, Jesse, like all of his friends had proof that Jesse was there. Yeah. But they changed their statement and said that he was there, but they got a lot of like conflicting reports about what time he had arrived and what time he had left the hostel. So that all of that information is still like really hazy. At the base of the Santa Cruz Trail, there's a logbook um, where hikers are required to sign in. So everyone's kind of aware of who's on the trail. I think it's kind of a safety thing because it is a fairly treacherous hike. But on the 29th of September, the day that Jesse was starting his hike, there was no logbook. Again, kind of weird information on whether there was a logbook ever for that day or if it was potentially disposed of at some point. There were reports of Jesse being spotted on the trail. Um, he had allegedly been seen camping with a couple of French tourists at the second base camp along the trail. But on the 29th, Jesse's phone pinged in Lima which is a seven hour bus ride from Juarez, where he was staying in the hostel. He had been in Lima for a few days before going to Juarez and their elevations are drastically different. So Juarez is something around, or at least the Santa Cruz trail in Juarez is around 16,000 feet above sea level, where Lima is pretty much at sea level. So that's a crazy difference in elevation. And if you're going to be hiking at really high elevations, you need to allow your body to adjust to that first. And Jesse was only in Juarez for about 24 hours before starting his hike. If you are hiking without allowing your body to adapt to a really high elevation, you run a very severe risk of getting um, acute mountain illness or elevation or altitude sickness because of the lack of oxygen. 
It's strange that Jesse being so experienced in like hiking and traveling that he wouldn't have given himself longer to adapt before actually leaving on the hike. On October 2nd, Jesse had a bus ticket to leave Juarez. I'm not quite sure exactly where he was going from there, but he never made it to the bus station. And all of his friends said that because he had planned out this trip so extensively and was on a very tight budget, he wouldn't have missed any of his planned transportation because he wouldn't have had extra money to go and spend on more tickets. After this, because he was never seen ever again. After this, Jesse's mom, um, I'm not sure what year, I don't know if it was later in 2017 or sometime in 2018, um, but Jesse's mom ended up traveling to the Santa Cruz Trail and hiking the entire thing, um, kind of as like her way of honoring him and completing what he couldn't. But there is something else strange where there are reports that if somebody dies along the Santa Cruz Trail, their bodies will basically just be put in like rivers and stuff along the way. And I'm not exactly sure why. I don't know if it's because they wouldn't have an easy way of like removing the bodies, kind of like Mount Everest, where like all of the bodies are just left up there because they don't really have a way of getting them back. I'm not sure if it's something similar to that um, or if it's mainly just to kind of dispose of them so that other hikers aren't, you know, running the risk of finding them. So do you think he made it to the trail? I don't know. I mean, if he had actually developed any kind of altitude sickness, because it makes you um, kind of delusional, like the lack of oxygen, you run a risk of passing out, like you just kind of start losing it a little bit. Someone had approached him on the trail while he was in that kind of like defenseless mental state, he would have been really susceptible to like something happening to him or like someone doing something or like taking advantage of him. Something else that I saw while I was researching this was that um, in the in that area, a lot of people will, I don't wanna make the area sound bad, but people kind of try to take advantage of foreigners um, and say that, you know, they have somewhere else for them to go, they can like bring you on a better trail or they can, you know, make it less expensive for you and essentially just like take your money um, or do something way worse. Yeah, I mean, that's what it sounds like to me is almost like the movie Hostel. Yeah. Where it's like right. a, a traveler who's They're selling people or something. Right, right. like some kind of human trafficking yeah. sort of thing or, or something crazy like that. And that story about his mm -hmm. mom's really good too. It, uh, that's really sad. Yeah, I love yeah, that, that was so heartbreaking to me to hear that his mother really wanted to complete that for him, yeah. knowing that he wasn't able to complete it on his own. And she was able to do it? Yeah. Yeah, she finished the whole thing. All right, Mystery Seekers, that's all I have for this week. Stay tuned for next week's video because Nate is going to tell you all about the mysterious disappearance of Marjorie West. That's a good one, apparently. Bye. Bye.